Mexico and a convivial atmosphere inside the arena as we get set for our first championship bout as we go to the tail of the tape. McDonald's six years, the elder has a three inch height advantage and has a six inch reach advantage over Kameda. And the rules here in Texas, no standing eight count, no three knockdown rule, only the referee can stop the fight. A fighter cannot be saved by the bell in any round. A fight is official after four rounds. If an accidental foul happens before four rounds, it's a no decision. After four, they go to the scorecards. Here's ring announcer, Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon and welcome to State Farm Arena here in Hidalgo, Texas, live on CBS. This is Premier Boxing Champions, presented by Corona Extra, La Cereza Mas Fina. The action begins with 12 rounds of boxing for the Bantamweight Championship. The three judges at ringside, Lynn Carter, Ignacio Robles, and Nelson Vasquez. And when the bell rings, the referee in charge of the action, Luis Pabon. And now, introducing first fighting out of the red corner. He wears the white and red. His professional record, 25 victories, two losses, with one draw, 12 wins by way of knockout from Lancaster, England. Introducing the defending champion, Jamie McDonald. And across the ring today, the challenger fights out of the blue corner. He wears the gold and stands undefeated as a professional. 31 victories, 19 by way of knockout, no defeats. He hails from Mexico City, Mexico, introducing a former bantamweight champion, Tomoki El Mexicanito Kameda. Referee Louis Pabon with final instructions. Jamie McDonald defending his version of the 118 pound title. Tomoki Kameda was a 118 pound champion, stripped of the belt due to good old fashioned boxing politics. <laughs> they touch gloves and we are set for 12 rounds or less in the Bantamweight division. A Japanese-Mexican fighter and a Brit fighting in Hidalgo, okay. Texas. An international okay. incident about to take place. <laughs> the bell and round one, the champion McDonald in the white with red. The challenger, Kameda, in the gold. Mara, one thing that's noticeable right away is uh, McDonald's height is considerable over Kamita, but Kamita actually has his hands in the proper position close to McDonald, whereas McDonald has his hands up high and sacrificing his height. Yeah, Kamita, one of three brothers, the youngest of three. Koki and Daiki, the other two. In fact, they had uh, claims to titles at the same time. Only group of three brothers in boxing history to all hold versions of a world championship. And he moved to Mexico at a young age at 15, wanted to get away from the controversy surrounding members of his family in the land of the rising sun. Turned pro at 17, and now challenging for McDonald's version of the Bantamweight belt. They know the Kameda family well in Japan. <laughs> and wanting to become a star, not only in his native Japan, but in Mexico, where he's known as the little Mexican, El Mexicanito. And amazingly, he speaks fluent Spanish. He moved there when he was 15 years old. A sharp kind of right hand there, Mark. Very sharp right hand. It's apparent that Kameda is much quicker than McDonald. McDonald is really sacrificing his height. He needs to get his hands closer to Kameda to make up the, the difference in quickness by having his hands closer. Yeah, McDonald tall for the Phantom Weight division at 5'8. Neither of these two warriors has ever been knocked down as a pro. There's a beautiful jab followed by the right hand through the guard by Kameda, putting his boxing skills on display early in round one. And it's the thing, McDonald, I think, is still looking for his rhythm, still looking to find his distance and his range, while Kameda, in a bit of an orthodox way with a fidgety kind of style, it's, it's hard to get his timing down right away. So we'll see if McDonald can get it figured out. Yeah, Kameda is known for his excellent accuracy. Not always a busy puncher. According to CompuBox, he throws about 44 punches per round. That's less than the 62 Bantamweight average. 
Farley Kameda is getting in on McDonald quite easy. Again, if you look at the position of Kameda, he's angled, he's more of a size uh, stance, which allows him to get in and out quicker. McDonald squared up right to him. Both his shoulders are square to Kameda, where he's, he's really sacrificing his height. Yeah, and I think he's still trying to get settled in. Well, he landed a couple of good shots a few seconds ago in that exchange. We'll see how, how uh, McDonald settles in and he can relax a little bit. Under 30 seconds left in the first round. McDonald trying to establish the jab on the shorter Kameda who comes back with a one-two that misses. There's a right hand behind the guard by Kameda. Comes in close, leaning forward. Opening himself up to a possible uppercut as the final seconds now elapse here in Hidalgo, Texas. When we come back, round two, PBC on CBS. Quick action from the last round is that double jab, triple jab, and then the right hand cuts the distance for Kamado. Welcome back to Hidalgo, Texas, deep in the Lone Star State at the tip of the border of Mexico. And big boxing fans, of course, here to support Omar Figueroa coming up later in our feature attraction, but already invested in this Bantamweight title fight between the champion Jamie McDonald in the red and white and the challenger Tomoki Kameda in the gold with Tate Trim. Kameda has, has a very reactive stance. He's, he's looking to react on everything McDonald does, and I think it's causing a little bit of doubt in McDonald, in McDonald's ability to want to throw his jab and just throw all the punches, right, Bert? Yeah, absolutely right. But, but what he doesn't understand and what's confusing him right now is how Kameda e so e easily gets to it. And he doesn't realize he's, again, I, I'll keep reiterating this, he's sacrificing his height and his distance. If he would angle his body more and put his left hand closer to Kameda, it would throw Kameda off a little bit more. Throughout his career, McDonald known for his high volume jab oriented offense. We've seen the jab on full display thus far in this fight. Now, looking to strike the rhythm, each of them trying to paint the other into throwing first a lead right hand, left hook to the body by Kameda. There's a signature punch for a, a Mexican based fighter, and the left uppercut connected as well. Right now, it's, it's uh, amazing how Kameda, giving up all of his height, is able to hit. McDonald would lead big punches and with from the rear hand. Nice double jab by McDonald. He needs to continue that. And he needs to do more of that. You see how it controls Kameda's distance it's right perfect. there. And McDonald's got to be more confident in doing that. No, it is. No, it is. He got hit with a counter right hand earlier yeah. in the first round. Yes. I think kind of made him doubt his own jab. Midpoint of the second round. McDonald known as a busier fighter. Kameda more selective but more accurate. And as uh, according to CompuBox, landing nearly half his power punches. We've seen him land the left hook to the body. There's the overhand right and the left uppercut, almost a shovel hook there by Kameda. The good thing about McDonald using his jab now, he's doubling it up. So we've seen him use it three times, and each time he kept Kameda at bay. Under a minute left in the second. Action in the center of the ring. There's a right hand to the body by McDonald. Right uppercut now throwing punches is the champion. And he's setting his range up better there as Kameda tried to come over the top of the right hand there. McDonald stepped back and counted again. So he's starting to get the range of Kameda a little better and control it a little better here in round two. Both jabs miss. McDonald continues to pump out that signature jab. And Virgil is the... The cerebral trainer that you are, I mean, it's really basic fundamentals. Everything is behind that jab. You have an effective jab, you're going to be a decent prize fighter. Well, it sets up everything. You can use it in so many different ways. You can bother your opponent, you can punish your opponent, you can counter your opponent. And it, it's apparent right here, Get since jab he's from been Kameda. using his jab, that it's, it's, he's had a better round. A jab fest here in the second frame. As Kameda goes on the attack, trying to walk down McDonald, and there's a series of jabs. I don't think David Letterman ever committed a top 10 list to Hidalgo, Texas, but guess what? Only eight shows left. Monday, Dave's got Howard Stern. Plus, later this week, George Clooney, Oprah Winfrey, Julia Roberts, and former President Bill Clinton. Don't miss these historical final shows only on CBS. And the action continues here in round three. Kameda coming forward as that left hand 
out wanting the maybe blind McDonald, but McDonald bobbing and weaving, both feigning, both waiting for the other to initiate the attack volley. Yeah, and, and both trying to get that positioning now. They're both are starting to find their rhythm a little bit. Let's see how this, this third round opens up. Tomato is looking to counter. He'll lead with his jab, but he's looking to counter. He's trying to time McDonald's jab right now. And I think he wants to come over the top of it. Yeah, a lot of times Virgin, it seems like he throws it short on purpose, looking to get a reaction maybe exactly. to, to, for a counter, and then he tries to counter that exactly. counter. Exactly. A bit of a chess match here between these two. And a very active chess match. Speed of chess. Yes, it is. And Pameda walking down. McDonald backs him to the ropes momentarily. McDonald flashes a jab. There's that lead left hook to the body by the little Mexican. McDonald's made a good adjustment uh, the last round. He's making that same adjustment this round. As Paul, he said, he's starting to get into a groove. Like right there, he threw a lead right. He realized he was open, and he took, he took himself off the line of fire. That was a good move. He's, he's, he's becoming alert to what Samuda's doing. And that's the thing, Bird. You see, you can control range with just your jab and your legs. Yes. You force the other guy into mistakes. Yes. And we talk about marketability, Paulie, at the uh, opening of the broadcast as Kameda goes on the attack. He, he told us that he's a combination of Floyd Mayweather and Manny Pacquiao. Not surprised he'd say something like that coming on the heels of the fight of the century last weekend. <laughs> I think he meant their, all their best qualities. <laughs> well, he's known for his speed. And in the fighter meeting, he smiled when he added the word power. He has 19 knockouts. Oh, and went to down. And McDonald goes down for the first time in his career. 45 seconds left in the third. And Kameda now with a sense of urgency, wanting to put the finishing touches, wanting to reclaim a piece of the bantamweight title. It was a good shot front right hand by Kameda as he was looking to come over the top, which he did, but he actually beat him to the punch before uh, McDonald threw the jab. So he saw something that McDonald was doing, telegraph that jab and beat him to the punch. Yeah, it was a couple of things he did earlier in the, in the early rounds, was leave with that right hand and kind of get it in. I think he found the spot for it. Final seconds of a terrific third round for Tomoki Kameda as the champion, Jamie McDonald, touches the canvas for the first time in his career. Right here, we see Kameda step in and throw a big overhand right that puts McDonald down. Again, he had timed the jab, but he telegraphed it right there. That's where he telegraphed the jab, and he timed him right there. He got him, with the, he got him with the faint, Verge. He bends his knees. McDonald starts to drop his hand, thinking Kameda's exactly. going to the body. Exactly and we we'll see another right. replay of it. Now, Let's right see. before he faints, he, 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 he telegraphs the jab, and he brings it back. There's his knees bending, and it's going to draw there that is. reaction. It's going to draw that shot. reaction. Beautiful, beautiful. Here it is again. Kameda's already bent his knees there, and that's going to draw the reaction. It's going to lower McDonald's hand just yes. enough. that bending of your knees does, it, 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 gave the, it gave the impression to McDonald that Kameda was going to the body, it made him drop his arms just a little bit to protect his body, and his head was open. Absolutely. A catapult right hand crashes into the jaw of Jamie McDonald, forcing the champion to go down for the first time in his career. And Kameda and McDonald in the center of the ring, McDonald trying to avoid that lightning quick jab. Jamie, as soon as he went back to the corner, told Dave Caldwell in the corner, he said, you know, he didn't hurt me, he didn't hurt me. So, possibly a flash knockdown, but the shot, definitely a good one, right, What's interesting is, uh, I actually heard uh, Kameda's trainer tell him when McDonald stood up straight to go under, go under, and bring it over the top, and he did it right at that moment. That's good, uh, good harmony between the corner and the fighter. Talk to Kameda about his fighting style. There's a again a glimpse of the Mexican styles. A couple of clubbing right hands down by McDonald, taking advantage of his height there. As he dropped those right hands onto the side of Kameda's head. But Kameda wants to take the best of the Mexican fighting style, the best of the Japanese fighting style. And hey, even uh, taking a page out of the very classy Cuban style, his trainer from Cuba wanting to work uh, 
his feet and to have his feet under him when he punches. So he's really, a, you know, a hybrid of all these styles. Yeah. And Camino really has a rhythm that can really disrupt him. He gets his hand out, he's fainting, he's moving. I mean, McDonald's trying to get into his own rhythm, but Camino really can be confusing and hard to time. Well, what I see right now, McDonald has made yes. uh, adjustment by dropping down now. See, he realized he got hit by standing too high. So his corner gave him some good instructions. He's making that adjustment. When Kameda gets close, he's dropping down now to nullify that overhand at the top right hand. Yeah, between rounds, his corner relatively calm, told him to stay relaxed, stay focused. Don't lean in, don't give him anything. And as you mentioned, Virgil seeming to uh, make those adjustments here in round four as we close in on the final 60 seconds. Off the frame. There you see it again. He dropped down and actually gave him a shoulder. So he's forcing the Kameda to adjust again. But Kameda has great eyes. I'm sure he sees that. It, this is a great fight right now from a tactical point of view and also an action fight. Double action jab, make it two more jabs, and McDonald really wants to just gauge that distance, find the target, Paulie, before moving in. And that's exactly it, Mo. That, you know, McDonald's best way to win the fight is to control that range. He's a taller fighter, so if he can control the range, it'll make life easy on him. Make, make Kameda do all the work to close that distance. Half minute remaining in the fourth. Immediately again after the double jab, McDonald drops right there again. Kameda dropped as well, looking for the body attack, trying to go underneath, attacking that body. Once a taller fighter learns how to drop down with a shorter fighter without, he actually gets more range. Final seconds of the fourth round. A better affair for Jamie McDonald. Was it enough to win the frame? There's a left hook counter by Kameda. It's out of range. Good adjustment by McDonald. Exhibiting his uh, championship acumen there, the champ as he made the necessary adjustments in round four. Round five begins with Tomoki Kameda in the gold. The champion McDonald in the white and red trim, and Kameda again moving forward. There's the jab from McDonald, misses with the white uppercut. What adjustments would you like to see Kameda make now in response, Virgil? Well, Kameda has great eyes, and he will make certain adjustments in this fight. This fight is very tactical, but it's also very action packed. And I see Kameda right now wanting to go to the body when McDonald drops down. He's making motions over there. He hasn't thrown the left underneath right now, but he's, he's indicating that that's what he wants to do from the last scene. Yeah, exactly, Virgil. I was noticing the same thing. As McDonald starts to drop, he's taking away the target to the head. So Kameda, being he's already cut that distance, will try to get to the body. He's right. right there. He wants to keep uh, McDonald occupied to the good body shot by McDonald. And comes again with that clubbing right hand. Striking the side of Kameda's head. And McDonald using his legs very intelligently now. He's able to s s sneak those shots in and then jump back out. He's got the height advantage, so he forced Kameda to keep reaching. And a big reach advantage, six inches for the champion. Kameda needs to find a way to avoid that jab, work his way underneath, but being kept at bay by the champ. Now he comes with the right hand, but pays for it with a right uppercut, or left uppercut on the inside by the champ. Kameda is trying to set up his left to the liver. That's what he's trying to do. He's baiting him, he's decoying him. He's going over, he's keeping him occupied up top, but what he really wants is that left underneath. Tactical affair, both looking each other in the eyes, trying to gain that upper hand as again, McDonald comes forward with the jab. There's a piston-like jab by Kameda, but unable to navigate the reach disadvantage. Uh, Virgil unable to land the jab. Exactly, right there you saw Kameda drop down and he, and he tied up McDonald, but he's testing him right now, see? He's getting in close with the distance before he lets the punch go. Final minute of the fifth. And that's the thing about closing that distance, you gotta close it right, sometimes you get too close. A sharp counter right hand by Kameda. You want to be able to navigate that distance without getting too close and smothering yourself. So it's a bit tricky at times. McDonald fighting a great fight. There, there's the left underneath. There it is again. So McDonald in close still, managing to score on Kameda. There's a right hand to the body. There's a left to the body by Kameda in return. Left uppercut on the inside by McDonald. Crouching. Both of them trying to get underneath each other. There again, McDonald gives him his left shoulder and comes back there with a right again. uppercut. McDonald right there. We've seen the left on the knee several times now. Kameda's trying to make McDonald bend to him to get the left in, but McDonald's giving him a good, tough fight. We are through five rounds here in Adolfo, Texas. You're watching PBC on CBS.
talked about McDonald controlling that distance. We talked about McDonald controlling that distance and being in and out and forcing Kameda to reach. You see McDonald gets his work in there and puts his puts a combination together, steps back out and forces Kameda to reach. And that's a, that's using your legs and your height. Which McDonald has the advantage in here being the six inch the six inches taller or so, right? Six inches. Six inch uh, reach advantage. Exactly. On display there in that replay. The bell in round six. State Farm Arena, located in southern Texas, just across the Rio Grande from Mexico, where a big boxing fan base is located always very passionate combat sports fans in this part of the world, and they are enjoying what they're seeing here between Jamie McDonald and Tomoki Kameda at close quarters. McDonald trying to attack the body and both exchanging punches now in close. So action heating up here in round six. Kameda has gone into counter-punching mode. He's shown his versatility by getting schooled in Mexico, getting schooled in Cuba, as well as Japan. And he's shown his versatility here. And McDonald's not having none of it right now, but nice right hand. Lead right hand to the body by Kameda, who again right there. Japan. There's a right uppercut by McDonald as Kameda swims in close and eats another uppercut. Oh, Kameda getting those all the hand rights as well, closing that distance. He's showing McDonald a lot of things, but McDonald's still putting up a gallant fight. He's in this fight, make no mistake about it. And showing good in fighting skills. Kameda made his US TV debut back in July of last year on the Canelo Alvarez Arizlandi Lara undercard. He stopped Wang Luang Sorsingu in the seventh round on a beautiful, a textbook Mexican left hook to the body. And that was quite the first impression here in America and wants to continue to build a name for himself. But Jamie McDonald wants to ensure that he brings his claim to the Bantamweight title back across the pond to the UK. You see all the all the stuff that Kameda does to try to lure McDonald into making the mistake. He'll throw the jab short, he'll faint, he'll, he'll throw some he'll throw some deep white punches, just trying to get bait McDonald into doing something wrong. You know that right, Bert? I think so. And I think one of the good things that happened with McDonald is getting the knockdown early because it put him on alert and it also made him make the adjustments that he needed to make to offset some of the things Kameda was doing because before that Kameda was all Kameda. And he's made great adjustments. Kameda continues to bait and show decoys. Under a minute left in the sixth round, Kameda going over top of the right hand, but a right uppercut countered by McDonald and Kameda again. At the age of 15, imagine that, leaving his home in Japan, wanting to escape the family controversy. His father, sure was banned by the Japanese Boxing Commission for threatening officials. He always admired Mexican fighters, set up shop in Mexico, and here he is, a former champion, still undefeated at 31-0. Paulie McDonald has given Kameda a little bump on the inside to push him away from that left underneath that he really wants. Yeah. It's very, very astute of him. Yeah, yeah. and Bert, you know how it is. With the body shot, you got to be planted right. So if, if McDonald gives him that bump, it won't let him plan for the body shot. Exactly. There's a big bump <laughs> as we close out round number six. The BBC on CBS continues. I don't know about you guys, I prefer playing golf in the winter. I don't lose as many balls when the water hazards are frozen. <laughs> and we get into the hazardous second half of this championship affair. We've reached the halfway point of this bantamweight title bout. The champion, McDonald, in the red and white. The challenger, Tomoki Kameda, in the gold. Well, I don't know if it means anything but over at this point, but over in uh, Kameda's corner, his trainer's putting his legs up on him now and really slapping his legs. I don't know if he's complaining about cramps or if you have a sprain or anything, maybe down the stretch, we'll see. Yeah, we'll have to watch that as we look at total punches landed through round six. A slight edge for McDonald. Yeah, he's been doing that the whole fight. Though. Yeah, the busy fighter. No, 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 it's a very close fight at this point. Yeah, I think McDonald's good at right and trying to make this a physical fight. He's a physically bigger bantam. I'm sure you weigh in at the same weight, but McDonald clearly carries the weight much bigger. Our job is to tell the story and analyze what we see. We don't have an unofficial score, but uh, guys, quickly, who do you have ahead after the midway point of this championship belt? Pauline, start with you. And I haven't been scoring it, but a lot of these rounds have been real close and, and real tough to score. You know, early on, it looked like Kameda had the advantage, but McDonald has made some good adjustments since, so it's close. 
Considering the knockdown, you do have to give Kameda uh, points for that, but from what my eye is telling me, it's a very close fight. It could even be even. Maybe Kameda slightly ahead at this point, but McDonald is closing the distance. And McDonald, as was expected, the busier fighter, but there was a nice counter right hand by Kameda. McDonald goes downstairs, digging away to the body, and then going up top with the right hand. There's a stiff jab by the champ. And in a close fight, that knockdown could come into play. The final score cards. That extra point Kameda gets. No. Kameda off the back foot. A little roughhousing from McDonald. Bobbing and weaving. That right hand just deflected off his forehead. Final 45 seconds of the seventh round. Kameda is uh, making McDonald follow him now, so he's making the adjustments here. It's interesting you say that, Virgil, because just as you say that, McDonald's corner is saying, it's your fight, don't chase him. Yes, I heard the same thing. Oh, and a nice jab by McDonald. Another stiff jab by McDonald as he backs up momentarily, resets. Now, Kameda is starting to shove back with McDonald. I don't know if he's going to step off real quick to counter or if he's going to go mano mano with him. But he's stepping off. He needs to step off now when McDonald leans forward and put a short, a short, the short punches in. seeing some of the jabs Jay McDonald's been using in this fight and very accurate a lot of the times uh, it's set his distance and it's when he's had the advantage it's when he's been able to set his distance that way and the jab has been a key part of that setting distance round eight begins Sorry, very evenly matched very tactical fight this fight very tactical fight but also an action fight Appreciating the nuances of the sweet oh. side's nice right hand by Kameda. I'll tell you, when McDonald's not alert two times, that, that sneaky right hand with Very Kameda. sneaky. Now, Kameda came out taking McDonald in a circle, and so he's making his adjustments right here. He realized he's going straight back and straight in. It's a little tougher, so he's taking him in a circle now. He's still moving in and out, but in a circular motion. He's taking him in a circle now. McDonald making himself smaller, leaning in. Potentially opening himself up to a right uppercut. Is that the, the, the wise strategy? Well, that's the thing, Mo. He got hit with an over the top right hand right. earlier, so and he made the adjustment to right. try to avoid those, but obviously, you know, you're going to open yourself up for other sure. shots if you're not alert to it. Yep, and they exchange headshots with a minute gone in the eighth. There's a bump by Kameda again. All about yeah. making those on the fly adjustments. Jab by McDonald. Now they lean into each other, and Kameda eats a right uppercut. There's a left hook by Kameda. What's significant is when Kameda attacks real quick and come in, McDonald covers up instantly, which gives Kameda an opportunity to assess the situation and place the punches in the right area. Not one time has he looked to counter or put his lead out and stop him where he wants to stop him. We're halfway he's, through round eight. You know what it is? A lot of times he's trying to catch and shoot approach where he's trying to catch Kameda shots on the gloves. Well, well, the 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 body. Yeah, busier fighter, that, and he's landing these that, shots. That, that the left hook also by Kameda bothered McDonald. There's a left hook early underneath. Right there, he's bringing it on the inside. But you right see there, the catch and shoot yes. by McDonald, McDonald off McDonald that left hook. It's exactly. almost he's waiting for it, knowing yes. Kameda wants to throw it. And he returns fire effectively. Very evenly matched fight. Yeah, it's like they keep answering each other. Very tactical and intelligent boxing from both guys. Final right. 60 when you give seconds. one man kudos, the other one comes right back and shuts it down. <laughs> First three punch combination we've seen. But bounced off the gloves of McDonald. 45 seconds now remaining in the eighth. McDonald locking down Kamehameha. That was a great move. He's trying to draw him in. Setting a trap. There's a triple left hook again, bouncing off the high guard, but trying to push forward, trying to show the aggression, trying to impose his will on McDonald. I think what Kameda's doing right now is just showing him the punches and not really intending to hit him off, but gauging the distance, and all of a sudden he'll step back in with a big one, just like he just did a second ago. The right the difference is stark, this bantamweight fight. He is a big boy at 118, Jamie McDonald. Good round by Kameda, but it was McDonald landing this right hand here. 
And there's a body shot by Kameda returning and returning a favor for McDonald. We're back with live action here, PBC on CBS. Set for round nine. The champion, Jamie McDonald, former champion, Tomoki Kameda, stripped of his championship after wanting to unify the titles, going for another portion of the 118 pound title and on his back foot now, keeps coming forward though and very close tactical affair. I saw Kameda turn out and look out in the audience at his brother and got some instructions from his brother. McDonald smacked him right in the face with the jab. But I think his brother told him to step in and shorten up the punches, particularly the uppercut and the motions that his brother was trying to show him. Well, Kameda is a fighting family in Japan. McDonald also a fighting family. Twin brother Gavin McDonald said to be the more diligent sibling in terms of discipline during training. There's a jab from the gym. There's a right hand over the top by Kameda. That's the second right hand Kameda's landed. Again, it looks like he's made the adjustment. Left he's coming in, body. he's staying, not doing nothing, and he comes in and whacks him. He's starting to shorten up. He's staying in great position to counter McDonald right now. And every Mac time you land 50% right or more of your power shots, guys, it's a, a pretty good round, Paul. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And both guys having their moments here. They're jockeying for position on the inside. A lot of both guys using the catch and shoot approach, which is to block the other guys inside. Right there, Kameda just did it. And McDonald did it back to him. Both guys putting, keeping their hands in great position on the inside so they're able to transition from the defense to the offense creating some exciting exchanges this is where mcdonald's jab becomes very important in, the, in these late rounds right here nice One shot to there. the body by kameda there's mcdonald leaning in with his left shoulder but kameda now finding his rhythm lands another overhand right it was the one that dropped him earlier in, yes, the, in the fight. And McDonald right. got low on that one. He didn't catch a clean. McDonald going down for the first time in his career with less than a minute left in round three. Under a minute remaining here in round nine. He made a very busy this round and really showing him a lot of different things. McDonald's fighting back, but he made him more effective at this point. Exchange jabs. McDonald, Ace is slowing down. He's the uptick in the volume of punches. He's known for throwing. That's what he has to do. He has to keep jabbing no matter what to, to, to cut the activity down. Yeah, yeah. make, make Kameda earn that really. That's right. Make him earn it, not just come in when he wants to. Final half minute of the round. McDonald goes downstairs with a right hand to the body. There's a oh. right hand lead that connects, but it's Kameda replied. Back Kameda back comes back with a couple of left hooks. So how do you score that one, stop, Paul? Stop. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to right, come back and call with two levels. Final seconds of the ninth. Lead right hand by Tomoki Kameda. McDonald misses with a right. Here we see McDonald landing a nice lead straight right towards the end of the round. Kameda, I believe, comes right back and counters that, but that wasn't the scene right there. He falls in. Counter with a head butt. That head butt. I don't know if that caused the cut that McDonald has on his eye. He has a slight cut on his left eye. So a gritty affair here between Jamie McDonald, the champion, Tomoki Kameda, the challenger, as they meet in the center of the ring once again to renew hostilities here in round 10. Good infighting by both guys, and there's that jab that scores and a couple of lightning quick left hooks to the head by Kameda. Very close fight. Mauro Ranello along with Holly Malinaji getting set to return to the ring and former trainer of the year Virgil Hunter who is uh, preparing Amir Khan for the same night, May 29th. Great night in boxing, return of the magic man. <laughs> Good double jab by Kameda. Uh, McDonald did something real nice a few seconds ago. He used a range jab, and what I mean by that, he's not trying to smack him, he just sticks it out there and tries to keep him right where he wants him. Just did it again, followed up with a right. Yeah, a lot of times that'll gauge the reaction exactly. you're gonna get. See if you can measure He did it again, right and he dropped it right off of the combination. Good off combination of by McDonald. That was a nice move. And because what Kameda's trying to do now, he's trying to make McDonald come to him. So yes. it, and McDonald can't just walk right to him, so finding that range, using that range finder jab is intelligent. Exactly. And McDonald's had some success with the uppercuts as 
Kameda comes back with a couple of his own. There's a right to the body, then the jab. So really picking up the pace in terms of his offensive output is McDonald. But again, Kameda responds right away. McDonald at this point landing a more telling punches. We don't know what the judges are looking at today, but he's landing more telling punches in this round. Kameda seems to be a little more busy. McDonald landing good telling punches. Dare I say, we are in Texas, and Polly, you've uh, had your fair share of uh, controversy in the low Stars game. Yeah, but this one is all good body shotting. Good, good, nice good return hook by Kameda, and that's the thing. It's been tipped for the all night. It's a tough fight yep. to score nice, in the end. Tough fight. Nice short right by Kameda. And one guy, one guy will do something, right. and the other guy will answer with a nice shot of his own. Under a minute left in the 10th round. There's a left hook upstairs by Kameda, who then backs away, wanting to respect. Space and McDonald then continues to work that big huge jab. Long reach. McDonald's size has served him well in this fight, too. He's taking some big punches. Oh, and, he, and he has physically uh, attacked a commander with the shoulder. Yes, and he has. Him up on the inside. Yes, he has. He has used his size well. There's a right hand over the top by McDonald. Right hand returned by Kameda. Kameda just ran a nice Quick one, combination. Two and There's a, a nice right. right hand and a left hook to the body. And a right hand by Kameda. And the jab by McDonald. Good combination by the challenger in the closing seconds of round number 10. Last round is a good exchange. A right hand by McDonald countered by Kameda. And then McDonald comes back with his own right hand. And Kameda comes back with his own hook right hand. So again, a tit for tat in this fight. Good action. Guys both trying to get in and out of range, getting their shots off. But McDonald fought that last round with a cut on his eye that opened up at the end of the round before. We are into the championship rounds. Quickly going on the attack is Jamie McDonald. Round 11 underway. Tomorrow I think we're gonna have a real treat for our viewers in round 11 and 12. This fight is very close. I think both fighters really sense that. I think we're going to really see some going after each other Come, these last two yep. rounds. Both have been very good in the championship rounds. Kameda, of course, undefeated in his career, 4-0. McDonald, 5-1, as he eats a left hook to the side of the head. Good body shot by McDonald. Very good body shot. You see Kameda trying to be fidgety and, and, and going back and forth and trying to confuse McDonald and get, and get control of the range. McDonald's doing a good job with, good job with that jab. And when Kameda makes that slide-in move, that slip-in move, if he would come behind a little short jab with that slip-in move, it would open up again that overhand right yeah. in the left underneath. Yeah, so he's coming in with both hands in defensive position. Yeah, it seems like he's just rushing it a lot. Yeah. He's getting there, but he doesn't seem to know why he wants to get there at this point. Well, that's the thing. He gets there, and then he smothers himself because McDonald yes. kind of closes up and steps yes. in. And he could step over after he gets there, make a quick move over to the side angle and get a shot off. We talked about McDonald and the lessons learned as he gets another right hand from Kameda. Said he never wanted to feel that emotion again. He says he's now full of confidence, didn't believe in himself. No, early on, he wasn't a boxing man, didn't live and breathe it, but now he likes winning money and the champion, well, he always makes the most, right, Paulie? Exactly. Just like any job, the better you're at your job, the more they pay you. Now, right there, we saw the Cuban flavor in Kameda. He just threw a five-punch combination Cuban style. And the body attack continues for McDonald, digging away with those right hands to the midsection. Under a minute now remaining in the penultimate round here for McDonald's bantamweight title. And now Kameda trying to make McDonald chase him and then trying to lure him in and maybe hit him with something. Let's see if McDonald can maintain this point with that jab. Now the, the Matador beginning to come out for Tomoki Kameda. That's the thing where McDonald has to be careful. He can't just follow him around. He's got to stay maintained behind that jab and keep, as he walks him down, use that like jab just that. like that. Final 30 seconds of the 11th. McDonald goes downstairs with a couple of shots now over top of the right hand. Meanwhile, Kameda is trying to get inside, wanting to attack the body as well. Maybe go upstairs. There it is with a cuffing right. Final 15 seconds of the round. Oh, Counter combination. Right, Kameda. Hand speed on display for Tomoki Kameda. 
We're going to the final round. Good catch and shoot by Camilo. Yeah. Real close. Cool. Here we see the knockdown in the third round, which become very significant in the judging when this fight go is over and if it goes the distance. We'll see if it comes into play. Overhand right by Kameda. He hasn't landed it since when McDonald made the adjustments. I mean, we have a tight, in. tight Just fight for our viewers. Yeah. But think about your hands up and you're moving your head. Right? Don't, don't work. Yeah. Throw three shots and then come out getting caught with one big shot end. Yeah. Right? Because all these little fans are all... You're not going to swing State Farm Arena, Hidalgo, Texas. We are set for the 12th and final round. McDonald's Bantamweight title on the line, a show of sportsmanship. The champion won the title back in May of last year on the undercard of Carl Frotch. George Groves, two in front of 80,000 fans at Wembley Stadium, has made one defense, looking to successfully defend the title a second time here in America. I think this round is going to speak for itself. Both fighters know this fight is very close. McDonald defeated Tab Tim Dang Narachawat for a vacant bantamweight belt. And now going to work with his hand speed on display, working on Tomoki Kameda in the first 30 seconds. McDonald doing good, coming behind a jab. He's landing some big shots this round. He's pulling away from Kameda. Kameda's going to do something to turn this around or let McDonald close the show. This could be a big factor in scoring here. Yeah, good, good start to this round by Dean McDonald. It's been a competitive contest in the final two minutes. Talk about what either needs to do to really make a statement, Virgil, quickly. Well, I think one, need, one or the other needs to close the show big to put a statement on a fight this close. And that, I think that would be the deciding factor. And, Polly, do you agree that it still remains close? No one has really solidified an upper hand in this fight? It's been a very close fight throughout, but McDonald has got a clear advantage here in round 12 so far. Big advantage. I don't know if Tomato's waiting for him to punch early and finish the show. McDonald continues to tattoo Tomoki Kameda with a series of shots under a minute and a half remaining. There's a stiff right oh, hand by the champion. Short right hand connects as well. And it's all Jamie oh. McDonald, the champion here oh. in round 12. Omar, as we talked about in the pre-fight, he learned from his two losses. Tomato being undefeated, hasn't learned that yet. He can make Nice left underneath by Kameda. I think Kameda's just laying in there. He's not even warming his hands. He's allowing McDonald to get these combinations off. And if you're going to lay in there like that and not get off, yeah. you might as well stay on the outside. Well, right up there and one, two, two combination for Kameda and McDonald now. They exchange good action here to close out this championship affair. Stiff jab by Kameda. Or, excuse me, McDonald. The both of them with a sense of urgency. Under 42 seconds remaining in this championship bout. Leaning in, and it's McDonald that initiates the attack. Kameda comes back with a glancing left hook. 30 seconds. Big round for McDonald. The champion okay, let's go. running to serve notice that he came to America not only to defend the title, but impress this American audience. He knows where the big paydays lie. Boxing very alive and well in Britain, but he wants to perform under the bright lights of the USA. A beautiful exchange. What a way to close the show here, PBC on CBS. Great fight, man. Tomoki Kameda salutes the crowd. He thinks he's done enough, but McDonald looked very impressive in that final round, Polly. Yeah, and, and it was a lot of times until the very end uh, in that last round, you know, Kameda got some good shots off at the end of it, but he was laying on the inside and not really moving his hands. And there you can see some action from the end of the round where both guys were letting their hands fly when they heard that 10 second warning.
Well, it was a close encounter of the Bantamweight kind. It goes to the judges. Will Jamie McDonald hold on to the gold, or will Tomoki Kameda become champion once again? Back here at State Farm Arena as we await the, await the official decision looking at the fight stats. Big edge in jabs, not surprising for McDonald. And very close when it comes to the total punches landed. Let's make it official with Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, having gone the distance, we'll go to your judges' scorecards at ringside. All three judges, Lynn Carter, Ignacio Robles, and Nelson Vasquez, all score the fight exactly the same at 114 to 113 for the winner. By unanimous decision, and still, Bantamweight champion, Jamie McDonald! Well, a mixed response here, obviously, a big a Mexican fan base across the border from Adago, but that 12th round may have indeed sealed the deal for Jamie McDonald. An impressive victory here in what was a hotly contested affair, Paulie. I think without a doubt it sealed the deal. I mean, you got a one-point score, with the knockdown, without the knockdown, it would have been 115, 113. So if, if Tomoki Kameda would have won that last round, those scores would have been reversed at 114, 113 for him. So that last round, clearly the decision maker in the judges' scorecards.